There's a, a theologian named Golden Lane who says that uh, God's love or divine love is incessantly restless until it turns all woundedness into health, all deformity into beauty, and all embarrassment into laughter. So I was uh, so privileged uh, for the last several days to be in uh, Chicago and Louisville, Kentucky with the great Joanna and Jeanette who uh, spoke at many events and uh, were so moving and told their stories and people were sobbing and standing ovations. And I was looking at kind of what was the the common denominator in, in their journeys and it had a lot to do with um, shame being burned away by love uh, that somehow what enabled them to become magnificent mothers and to find their own true selves in love was, was leaving shame behind and so shame uh, keeps us uh, distant from ourselves strangers to ourselves and it's the love of this place that burns away that shame that divides us from ourselves. Um, because as long as we feel shame, we can't really ever believe ourselves worthy of love. And people will say that shame is the root of all addictions, you know, gang addiction, drugs, alcohol. Uh, there was a homie I knew who, was, uh, who, who said he was the only screw up from, from a large family and uh, he said, I. I am the black sheet of my family, not sheep, but sheet. And he says, everyone in my family, they see me like I'm less. Which reminded me also of this kid, homie I met in a probation camp, who I was asking about his family and his parents and his siblings. He says, I have a brother and a sister, but they're good. I said, oh, okay. And that makes you here locked up. And that would make you bad, he said. And I think that somehow uh, we want to kind of come to terms with our shame because we've, we've grown to prefer our rage over our shame. But once we can get past it, once we can allow uh, the love of a tender community to burn that away, the loving gaze of each other, so that we can no longer be strangers to ourselves. I was thinking of a homie named Lefty who I knew at Folsom Prison, and he just died of pancreatic cancer. He was a juvenile, tried as an adult, and probably would have had some action and gotten released, except for the fact that he died of cancer not that long ago. And, uh, you know, he came from a family of five. He was the youngest of five, two sisters and two brothers. and. We would always uh, take laps on the yard and we would talk and he would uh, you know, tell me stuff. And he said that his father was a hardworking man, he said, but every weekend he drank in excess and would always beat his mom. And he said that one Sunday morning he got up and he saw that his mom was being led around the kitchen by his two older sisters because she was her so badly beaten, her face that her eyes uh, were swollen shut and his father and his two older brothers were sitting on the couch and they were looking at TV and he calmly went into uh, his parents bedroom and opened a tiny drawer and pulled out a gun and he walked and he stood in front of his father and his brothers and he aimed the gun at his father and his father just looked horrified and terrified and the three of them moved to the farthest reaches of the couch and uh, little Lefty was, uh, tears are streaming down his face and he looks at his father and he says, you're my father and I love you. But if you ever hit my mother again, I will kill you. And he didn't, not then or ever. But human beings are complicated and everyone in this room has carried more than their weight and terror and violence and betrayal. But the thing I remember most was as Lefty was telling me this story, he says, to this day, 30 years later, I still feel ashamed because I made my father's face look like that. 
terrified. And unless you allow the powerful gaze of love to melt away your shame, you're not going to be able to get to the other side where you can discover your own true self in loving. So what we dedicate ourselves to do in this community of tenderness is today to embrace a love incessantly restless until it turns all woundedness into health, all deformity into beauty, and all embarrassment into laughter. Amen. <laughs>